In this video, I will show you how to perform crude operations using Spring Boot, Spring MVC, Time Leaf, and MySQL database. So we can read products, we can create products, we can update products, and also we can delete products. So to create a new product, we have to click on this button. Then we need to fill this form. So here we can see that we can upload a new image. Let's click on Cancel. And we are on the list of products. Let's update this product for example, so we can click on this edit button. We can change the name. We can also upload a new image. Then submit. So here we can see that we updated the name and we have this new image. And to delete a product, we can click on this delete button. So let's delete the product having the ID 29. So here we have this alert. Are you sure? If we click on cancel, nothing happens. Let's click on delete again. And let's click on OK. And here we can see that the product with the ID 29 has been deleted. Now we need to create a new Spring Boot project. So we can create it using Spring Initializer. So just here let's type Spring Initializer. Then let's go to the first link. So here we will create a project using Maven. So let's select Maven. And we will create a project using the Java language. So here we can select the latest version of Spring Boot. And then we can provide it with the group ID. So the group ID is the name of the owner of this project. So here we can change this value. Then let's provide the artifact which is the project name. So let's call it best store. And here we can select jar and we can choose this version of the GDK. Now we need to add some dependencies. So the first dependency is Spring Web. Let's select it. As we can see here, Spring Web allows us to build web applications, RESTful applications and Spring MVC applications. It has an embedded server, which means that we don't need to install any server. Now we need to add more dependencies. So we need to add the DevTool dependency. So this is the dependency that we need. It allows us to reload the application each time we make a modification. So it is very practical. It is optional, but it is very useful. So let's select it. In this video, I will show you how to connect to MySQL database. So we need to install the MySQL driver. So here let's type MySQL and let's select it. Then we need Spring GPA. So let's select it. So Spring GPA allows us to read the data from the database using Java objects. And to validate the form data, we need to install another dependency, which is called validation. And finally, we need another dependency, which is time leaf. So this dependency allows us to build dynamic HTML files on the server. And finally, let's download this project. So let's click on generate. And let's save this file. I will save it on the desktop. Now let's extract this zip file. So I will extract it in the documents folder. I already have this folder which is called Spring Project. Let's select it. Then OK. Now let's open this project. So I will open it using Eclipse. So it is available under Documents into the folder called Spring Projects. And here we have our new project. Let's select it. Then finish. So this project contains one Java class which is available in the Java folder. So this is the main class. It contains the main method. So we can run this project from this file. We can make a right click. 
then run as, then Java application. But here we can see that we have this error, fail to configure a data source. To fix this, we need to configure this application. So here let's go to the resources folder. And let's open application.properties. So here we have to configure our application to connect to the database. So we need to add these properties. Here we have the driver class name. I will use MySQL, so this is the MySQL driver name. Then this is the URL of the database, so I will use a database called Best Store. And of course we need to create it. This is the username, I don't have any password. We can add this property to, to display the SQL queries on the console. We need this property to update the database each time we update the models. And now we need to create this database. So in my case I will use my SQL that is available with exam. And I can create a new database using phpMyAdmin. So here we can click on admin. So these are the available databases. And I need to create a new database called Best Store. So we can click on new. And here let's provide the name of the new database. Then create. So here we can see that we have this new database. Now let's save this file. And let's restart the application again. So now the application is running correctly. And it is accessible at the port number 8080. So let's go to the browser. And here let's type localhost, then colon, then 8080. But here we have this error. This is because we did not create any controller and we have no static resources. So now let's create a new HTML file. We can create a new HTML file in the static folder. Let's call it index.html. So here we can write a simple text. For example, we can write, welcome to our website. Let's save the file. And let's refresh the page. So here we can see that we have this message, welcome to our website. Now let's use Bootstrap. So let's go to the website of Bootstrap. Here let's type Bootstrap. Let's go to the first link, then Docs. And here let's copy this source code that includes Bootstrap CSS and JavaScript from the CDN. Let's delete this text and let's paste the source code. We can change the title of this page. Then let's delete the h1 element and let's replace it with a div of type container. So this div is of type bootstrap container. It contains this h1 element with the text welcome to our website and it will be displayed in the center of the page. Also here we have top and bottom margin. Then we have this button. So it is a bootstrap button that will take us to this URL slash products and it has the text products. Let's save the file and let's refresh the page. So now we can see that we have this text which is displayed in the center of the page. We have this title, best store and we have this button. So for the moment when we click on this button we have this error because we did not create a route to this URL. Let's go to the previous page. So here we can see that I did not provide the name of the HTML file which is index.html. This is because by default if we don't provide the name of the HTML file then the content of the file index.html will be displayed. Now we need to create a new database table called products. So we need to create a model that describes this table. So first let's create a new package called models.
Then let's create a new class. Let's call it product. Then we need to add some annotations to this class. The first annotation is entity, because this class is a model that allows us to create a table in the database. And because I want to call the table in the database products, we need this second annotation. It is table that allows us to define the name of the table in the database, which is products. Now we need to import these classes. Then let's define the different attributes of this class. So the ID is the primary key, so we have to decorate it with the ID annotation. And then it will be incremented automatically, so we have to add this annotation and the strategy will be identity. And to create a column of type text, we have to use this annotation. It is at column, and this is the column definition, which is text. So if we don't add this annotation, then this column will be of type varkar. Now let's import the different classes. So here we can see that the different classes belong to the same package, so we can delete the name of the class, and let's replace it with star. Now we can delete this, and this as well. Then let's import this class. And finally, we need to create the getters and setters, so we can create them automatically. So here we can make a right click, then source, then generate getters and setters. So here we can select all the fields, then generate. Now when I save this file, the products table will be created. This is because in the application properties, we have this property. This means that when we update the models of this project, the database will be updated. So let's save this file. So here we can see that the application has restarted and this is the SQL query that is used to create the table. Now let's take a look at the database. And you can see that we have this new table. Let's take a look at the structure. And here we can see that the ID is the primary key and it is auto-incremental. So for the moment the products table is empty. So now let's fill this table with some data. We can click on SQL. And here we can write the SQL query that allows us to fill the table. So let's delete this query. And let's paste the following query. So here I will insert into the products table the name, the brand, category, price, description, the image file name, and the date. So the date will be the current timestamp. Now let's execute this query so we can click on go. And here we can see that 30 rows have been inserted. Let's click on browse. And now the table is not empty anymore. Now let's add the product images to our project. So first let's create the public folder in our project. So just here we can make a right click, then new, then folder. And let's call it public. Then we can add the product images to this folder. So I already prepared the product images in this folder, so we can copy this folder. Then let's open this folder using the Explorer. So we can make a right click on this project, then Properties, then let's click on this button. So this is our project, let's open it. And here we have the public folder. Then let's paste the images folder in this folder. So here we can see that the different images are available in the images folder. So let's open this folder. And let's try to access to this image for example using the browser. So we need to copy the name of this image. 
Then let's go to the browser. So here let's add slash, then the name of the folder which is images, then slash, then the image name. But here we have this error, so we can fix it by restarting the application. Let's start the application again. So now the application is running correctly. Let's go back to the browser and let's refresh the page. And here we can see that we can access the image. Now let's create a repository that allows us to read and write the products in the database. So let's create a new package. We can call it repositories, but a repository is also a service. So I will call it services. Then let's create a new interface. Let's call it Products Repository. So this interface should extend the GPA repository. So the GPA repository interface requires two types. The type of the model, which is product, which is the model that we created just here and the type of the primary key. So here we can see that the primary key is of type integer. That's why the type that we have here is integer. Now we need to import the missing classes. Now let's save the file. So this is all what we have to do and we don't need to implement this interface because Spring GPA will implement it for us. Now we can use this interface in order to read and write the products from the database. Now let's create the controller that allows us to perform CRUD operations on products. So first let's create a new package. Let's call it controllers. Then let's create a new controller. So let's create a new class and let's call it products controller. Then let's decorate this class with the controller annotation. So here we have to add add controller. And because we need to access to this controller at the URL that starts with slash products, we need also to add at request mapping. Now let's import the missing classes. Then let's request the products repository from the service container. So just here let's create a field. We can call it a repo, which is of type products repository. And because we need to request it from the service container, we have to decorate it with the annotation at auto wired. Now let's import the classes. Now let's create the method that allows us to read the products from the database. We can call this method show product list and it will return a string, which is the name of the HTML file that should be returned. So here we will read the products from the database using this repository, and we will store the products into this list, which is a list of product objects. Then we will add this object to the model that will be accessible to the HTML file. Now let's import the missing classes. So this method should be accessible using the HTTP get method. That's why we have to decorate it with the annotation at get mapping. So it will be accessible at the URL slash products or slash products slash. Now let's import this class. And let's create this HTML file. 
so we have to create it in the products folder that should be available in the templates folder so in templates let's create a new folder let's call it products so products that we have here is the name of this folder now let's create this file so it should be called index.html so let's copy the content of the first html file let's copy all of this and let's paste it here let's change the title of this page so here let's write products and let's change the text of this button so here we can write create product we can also change the url of this button so it will be slash products slash create then after this button let's create a table so this table is a bootstrap table we have the table head and we have the table body which is empty so in the table head we can see that we have eight columns we have seven columns to display the product details and in this column we will display two buttons the edit button and the delete button so here we will display the product id the product name the brand category the price the image and the date now let's fill the body so here we will fill the table using time leaf and for every product in this products list we will create a table row so the products list that we have here is the products list that we added to the model that will be accessible to the page so for every product we will display the product id the name the brand the category we will display also the price and we will add the unit then we will display the product image so here we have to add slash images slash which is the folder that contains the images then here we have the image file name we can set the image width to 100 pixels then here we will display the date so because the date is very long we can only display the first 10 characters of the date and in this cell we will display two buttons the edit button and the delete button so when we click on edit we will go to the url slash products slash edit and we will add the product id to the url and also when we click on the delete button we will go to the url slash products slash delete we will add the product id to the url but first we will ask the user to confirm if the user decides to click on yes then we will send a request to this url otherwise nothing will happen now let's save this file let's save the controller as well so here we can see that the application has restarted let's go back to the browser and let's click on products so here we are at the url slash products and we have the list of products so we can see that we have 30 products that are available in the database so for the moment we are displaying the products in the ascending order of id that allows us to display the oldest products first and to display the newest products first we need to display the products in the descending order of id so now i will show you how to reverse the order so let's go to our controller and let's provide the method find all with a parameter so we need to add sort.by this is the direction which is descending and this is the name of the column which is id now let's import the class let's save the file and let's refresh the page and now we have the products in the descending order of id that allows us to display the newest products first 
So to create and update products, we need to create a new model that allows the user to submit the product details. It is called a DTO model or data transfer object model. It will be similar to the product model that we created, but it should not include the ID. And instead of the image file name, which is a string, we need the file itself. So now let's create a new model in the models package. Let's call it product DTO. Then let's create the different fields of this class. So we need the product name, the brand, the category, we need the price, the description, and instead of the image file name, we need the image file itself. So here we have the name, and it should not be empty. So if we don't provide the name, then the validation error will be the name is required. Also, we need the brand which is required, and if we don't have the brand, then we will display this error message. Then we need the category which is required. We need the price, that should be a positive number. Then we need the description, which should be at least 10 characters, and at most 2000 characters. And finally, we need the image file, which is of type multipart file. Now let's import the missing classes. Then we can replace the name of this class with star. Then let's import this class. Then let's create the getters and the setters. Let's select all the fields, then generate. So now we can see that we have the getters and the setters. Let's save the file. And you can see that the application has restarted. Now in products controller, we need to create a new method that displays the form that allows the user to create new products. So let's create it just here. We can call it show create page and it returns a string, which is the name of the HTML file. So this method will be accessible at the URL slash products slash create and it will be accessible using the HTTP get method. So here we need the model that allows us to add some data that will be accessible to the page. And the data that we will add is this product DTO object which is of type product DTO. So we need to import this class. So we need to add this object to the model because we need to bind it to the form. Now let's create this HTML file. It should be called createproduct.html and it should be available in the products folder. So this is the products folder. Let's create a new file and let's call it createproduct.html. Now let's copy the code of the index.html file. So let's copy all of this and let's paste it here. Let's delete the H1 element and the A element and let's replace them with a row that contains one column. So here we have this div which is a bootstrap row that contains this div which is a bootstrap column. This column will be displayed in the center of the page and also we will add a rounded border to this column. Then we have some paddings and some margin. And here we have an H2 element with the title of the page. So this text will be displayed in the center. And we have a bottom margin. Now let's create our form. So here we have this form. It will be submitted using the post method. And we need the ink type because we will upload the image file. Then we will bind the product DTO object that we will receive from the controller to this form. So here we have this time leaf attribute. Then let's create the first row of this form. So here we have this div, which is a bootstrap row that contains a label with a text name. Then we have this input field, which is bound to product DTO.name. Then we have this paragraph. 
So this paragraph will be used to display any validation error related to product DTO.name. So if we have errors related to the name, then we will display the validation error related to the name. And to display this paragraph using the red color, here we have this bootstrap class, text danger. Then let's create the other rows of this form. So here we have this row that contains a label with the text brand and we have an input field which is bound to product dto.brand. Then we have a paragraph to display any validation error related to the brand. Then we have another row that contains a label with a text category and then we have a select element which is bound to product dto.category. So this select element contains these options. So this is the text that will be displayed to the user and these are the values that can be submitted to the server. Also we have a paragraph to display any validation error. Then we have this row that contains a label with a text price and we have this input field. So this input field is bound to product dto.price. It is of type number and the minimum value is zero. Then we have this paragraph to display any validation error. Then we have another row for the description. So here we have a text area which is bound to product dto.description and we have a paragraph for the validation errors. Then we have another row that allows the user to upload the image and here we have this input field which is of type file. So this input field allows the user to upload an image to the server and it is bound to product dto.image file. And finally we have this last row. So this row contains two columns. This is the first column and this is the second one. In the first column we have the submit button. So this is a button of type submit that contains the text submit and it allows us to submit the form to the server. Then we have the second column that contains another button. So it is a bootstrap button that will take us to the URL slash products. This means that this button allows us to go back to the list of products. And it is the cancel button. Now let's save the different files. Create product.html and productscontroller.java. So let's save all the files. Of course the application will restart. Then let's click on create product. So this time we are at the URL slash product slash create and here we have the create product form. So we have the name, the brand, the category which is a select element that contains these options. Then we have the price and the description and then we have the image that allows us to upload an image to the server. If we click on cancel, we have the list of products. Let's click on create product and let's submit the form. So when we submit the form using the post method, we obtain this error because we did not create a method that will handle the post requests. Now let's create a new method in products controller that allows us to create new products. So we can create the method create product that will be accessible at the URL slash products slash create using the post method. So this method returns a string and allows us to redirect the user to the list of products. So this method requires an object of type product DTO which is the object that is bound to the form. So this object will be filled using the submitted data of the form. And of course we need to validate the data of this object, so, so we need to add the annotation at valid. And to check if we have any validation error, we need to add the parameter of type binding result and we can call it result. So this object allows us to check if we have any validation error with the data that is available in product DTO. Now let's import the missing classes. So in our case, we did not add any validation annotation to the image file. So if we go to product DTO, 
We can see that we did not add any validation annotation to the image file, but the image file is required. So we need to check if we have the image file manually. So if product DTO dot get image file is empty, in this case we will add an error to this object and this error will be of type field error. So we will add an error to the product DTO object, which is this object related to the field image file, which is this field. And the error message will be the image file is required. Let's import this class. Then let's check if we have any validation error in this object. So if we have any validation error, then we will display the page create product.html. And here we can see that we did not provide this page with an object of type product DTO as we did in the previous method. This is not required because here in the parameters of create product, we have already an object of type product DTO, which is accessible to the page. Now let's save the file. And let's submit the form. So here we can see that we have the validation errors. The name is required. The brand is required. So other is a valid value. That's why we don't have any validation error with the category. Then the price is valid. The description should be at least 10 characters. We don't have the image. So we have this validation error. The image file is required. Now let's fill the form. Then let's click on submit without uploading the file. So here we can see that we did not lose the data of this form and we have this validation error. Now let's select an image. Then submit. And because the form data is valid, we can see that we are redirected to the list of products. Now we need to store the new product in the database. So if we don't have any error, first we need to save the image on the server. So to save the image on the server, first we need to read the image from the form. So we can read the image from product DTO. Then we need the date. So the date allows us to create a unique file name to this image. So here we have the storage file name, which will be the current date, underscore, the original file name. So we will save this image in the folder public slash images. So public is the folder that we created just here. And then here we have the images folder. So this is a string and this is an object of type path. If this path does not exist, then we will create it. Then we will store the image at this path. So here we have the upload directory, which is this path plus the storage file name that we created just here. And if we have any exception, then we will display the exception message on the console. Let's import the missing classes. So here we have multiple classes from the package java.neo.file and we can import them together. So just here, let's delete the class name and let's replace it with star. Then let's import this class. Now we need to save the product in the database. So we need to create an object of type product using the data of the object of type product DTU. So this is the object of type product DTU that we received from the form. And we will use it to create an object of type product that we will save in the database. So this is an object called product of type product. We will set the name, the brand, the category, the price and the description from product DTU. And we will set the date. So we will use this object, which is the date that we created just here. Then we will set the image file name which is this storage file name. Now we need to save this product in the database. 
So we will use this repository. So we have to call a repo.save and we will save this product. Now let's save the file. Then let's create a new product. Let's fill the form. And let's upload the image. Then submit. And here we can see that we have this new product. So here we can see that we have the product image. Now I will show you how to update the product details. So first in products controller, let's create a new method that allows us to display the page that allows the user to update the product details. So we can create the method show edit page that is accessible at the URL slash products slash edit using the HTTP get method. And this method returns a string, which is the HTML file. So we need to create this page, editproduct.html. So this method requires a model that allows us to send some data to the page. And of course, we need the product ID. So we can read the product ID from the URL. Let's import this class. Then we need to read the product details from the database and we need to send these details to the page. So here let's add try catch block. So if we have any exception, then we can display the exception on the console and we can redirect the user to the list of products. Now in the try, we need to read the product details from the database. So let's create an object of type product. So it is equal to repo, which is our repository dot find by ID. And of course, we have to provide this method with a product ID. So this method returns an object of type optional, and we need to convert it into an object of type product. So just here, let's add dot get. Then let's add this object to the model like this. It will be accessible to the page. Then we need to create another object of type product DTO and we need also to add it to the model like this. It will be accessible to the page and we will use it to bind it to the form. So here we have this object of type product DTO and we will set the name, the brand, the category, the price and the description using the data of the product object that we received from the database. And of course, we will add this object to the model like this. It will be accessible to the page. Now let's create this page. So let's create it in the products folder. And of course, we have to add the extension, which is HTML. So the edit product page will be very similar to the create product page. So let's go back to create product and let's copy all of this code. Let's paste it here. Let's change the title of the page. Then in this form, we have this row that contains a label with the text name. So we can copy this row. Let's paste it here. Then let's change the text of this label. So here let's write ID. And we will use this input field to display the product ID. So we don't need to bind this input field to any other field. So we don't need the time leaf attribute th column field and we have to replace it with value. And we want to display the value of the product ID, which is available in the object product that we added to the model. So just here, let's delete product DTU. And let's write product.id. Then this input field should be of type read only. 
Also, we can change this bootstrap class. And we don't need to validate the ID, so we can delete this paragraph. Then we need to display the current image. So we can display the current image just above the input field of the image. So just here we can display the current image. So here we have a new row. As you can see, it is a bootstrap row that contains only one column after this offset. So here we have this column that contains the IMG element. The source will be the folder of the images. So we have to add slash images slash. And then here we have the name of the image. So we can read the image file name from the product object. And we can set the width of this image to 150 pixels. Then just after the image, we can display the date of creating the product. So let's create another row. So in the label, we can display the text created at. And then we have this input field, which is of type read only. So we have this bootstrap class and we have this time leaf attribute. So the value of this input field will be product.created at. Now let's save the files. Then let's edit this product. So let's click on edit. So here we can see that at the URL we have slash products slash edit. Then we have this parameter id is equal to 31. So here we can see that we have id 31. So this input field is of type read only. Then we have the product details. So here we have the current image and we have this input field that allows us to change the image. And then here we have the date of creating the product. Now if I click on submit, we have this exception. So we need to create a new method that will handle the post requests. Now in products controller, let's create a new method that will handle the post requests that allows us to update the product details. We can call this method update product. So this method returns a string that allows us to redirect the user to the list of products. Also, we need the model that allows us to send some data to the page. We need also the product ID. And here we have the data of the submitted form. And of course, we need to validate the data of this object. That's why we have to add the annotation at valid. Then we have this object, which is of type binding result that allows us to check if the form data is valid or not. So first we need to connect to the database to read the details of the product having this ID. So we need to add the try catch block. In the try we need to read the product details from the database and we need to add this product to the model. So here we created an object of type product. It is equal to our repository dot find by ID. This is the product ID that we have just here. And then we have to call dot get to obtain an object of type product. Then we will add this object to the model. So like this, we can read the product details from the page. Then we can check if the submitted form is valid or not. So we need to check if we have any errors. So if we have any error, then we will display the edit product again. And of course, we will be able to display the current data because we have the product object and also we have the product DTO object that are accessible to the page. Otherwise, if we don't have any error, then let's check if we have a new image file or not. So if we have a new image, this means that the image that we received is not empty. In this case, we need to delete the old image. So the old image is available in the folder public slash images. So the old image path will be the path of the folder, which is upload dear dot the previous file name. So the previous file name is available in the product object that we received from the database. Then we will delete the image that is available at this path. And then we will save the new image file. 
So we need to read the image from product DTO, which is the object that contains the submitted data. So here we will read the image from product DTO. Then we need the date to create the unique file name of this new image. So the unique image file name will be the current date underscore the original file name of the image. And then we will save the new image at the path upload dir plus the new image file name. So the new image file name is this unique file name. So after saving the new image on the server, we will save the new image file name in the product object that we have to save in the database. So here we will update the image file name of this object, but also we need to update the other details. So we will update the product name, the brand, the category, the price, and the description from the submitted data. So the submitted data is available in product DTO. And then we need to save this object. So let's use our repository. And we need to call repo.save and we will save this product. Let's save the file. Let's go to the previous page. Let's delete the brand. Then let's click on submit. And because the brand is required, we have this validation error. Now let's provide the brand. Let's update the name. The price. And also let's update the description. Then let's upload a new image. Then submit. So here we can see that we updated the data of this product to the ID 31. We have a new name, a new price, and also we have this new image. Now I will show you how to delete products. So if I click on this delete button, we can see that we have this alert. Are you sure? We can click either on OK or on Cancel. If I click on Cancel, nothing happens. Now let's click again on Delete, then OK. So this time we can see that we are at the URL slash products slash delete. And here we have the product ID. Also, we have this error message because we did not create a route to this URL. So first, let's take a look on the index file that contains the delete buttons. So this is the delete button. We can see that it allows us to display an alert that allows the user to choose whether to delete or not the product. And if we click on yes, then we will go to this URL, slash product slash delete. And of course, we will add the product ID to the URL. Now let's create a new method in products controller that allows us to delete products. We can call this method delete product. It returns a string that allows us to redirect the user to the list of products. So this method will be accessible using the HTTP get method at the URL slash products slash delete. So it requires the product ID that is available in the URL. And then we need to read the product having this ID from the database. So let's add the try catch block. If we have an exception, then we can display this exception on the console. And in the try block, we have to read the product from the database having this ID. So we can use our repository and we can store the data of this product in this object, which is of type product. So before deleting the product from the database, we need also to delete the product image from the public folder. So first we need to create the image path, which is the path of the folder, plus the image file name. Then we will delete the image that is available at this path. So if we have any exception, we can also print it on the console. Then we can delete this product from the database. 
so we can use our repository and we can call the delete method and we have to provide it with the object that we want to delete which is this product now let's save the file and let's delete the product with the id 30 for example let's click on ok so here we can see that the product with the id 30 has been deleted